Chances are you've heard of Freddy Krueger, but would you recognize actor Robert England if you passed him in the street? He's not a bad-looking dude. Much easier on the eyes than old Freddy. In fact, the actors who play some horror movie villains are actually gorgeous in real life. See for yourself. Sophia Butella, The Mummy It was supposed to kickstart an all-new cinematic universe, but 2017's The Mummy unraveled pretty quickly. It got off on the right foot when Sophia Butella was introduced as Princess Amanet, but in the end, this reboot simply wasn't as fun as the 1999 Brendan Fraser version. Part of the problem may have been the lack of The Mummy herself, with Butella's screen time paling in comparison to her co-star, Tom Cruise. Everybody's been telling me this morning how scared they were, and it made me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> The Mummy's negative reviews and poor box office numbers left the future of the dark universe in doubt, but for all the bad press, Butella's dedication to the project was never in doubt. In fact, the Algerian actress just so happened to be a huge fan of Universal's classic monster movies growing up. She told The Independent, If you look at the original ones, they're interesting, profound metaphors. Before The Mummy, Butella was a backup dancer for Madonna and Rihanna, and she has appeared in other films such as Kingsman, The Secret Service, and Atomic Blonde. Bill Skarsgård, It Hiring an actor who moonlights as a model only to cover him in makeup might seem pointless, but Bill Skarsgård wasn't cast as Pennywise the Dancing Clown in the 2017 adaptation of Stephen King's It because of his good looks. The Swedish actor brought a whole new level of intensity to the character, setting his Pennywise apart from the earlier Tim Curry version. Getting into the right mindset for the role was difficult for Skarsgård. He found it even harder to shake it off after the film wrapped. He told Entertainment Weekly, I was home, done with the movie, and I started having very strange and vivid Vivid Pennywise dreams. Part of Pennywise is that he hates the kids, and it's so much anger. And most and clowns do. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Bonnie Aaron's The Nun. Billed as the darkest chapter in the Conjuring universe, The Nun caused a lot of hype but ultimately failed to impress. It scored the lowest tomato meter of any Conjuring universe film to date, but according to lead actress Thaisa Farmiga, the title character was plenty scary. Farmiga revealed that Bonnie Aarons would go out of her way to scare her between takes, often sneaking up behind her in the terrifying nun getup worn by her character, the demon Valak. Aarons had a blast on set, and to make her look so scary, it apparently didn't take as much effort as you might imagine. She explained to Coma Music Magazine that she actually wasn't wearing that much makeup, as it was strategically painted on. I'm their hand-painted Mona Lisa. Ken Kurzinger, Freddy vs. Jason Man Mountain Ken Kurzinger once played college football for the University of British Columbia, but he decided to get into stunt work after suffering a bad knee injury. He secretly hoped his stunt performances would lead to him being discovered, but he had no idea his very modest involvement in the Friday the 13th franchise would cause such a ruckus. The actor has admitted that his favorite role is horror icon Jason Voorhees. He first donned the hockey mask in 1989's Jason Takes Manhattan as a stunt double and also appeared in that film as one of Jason's victims. He banked his stuntman checks and forgot all about the character until he was offered the chance to play him for real. As far as being afraid of it, I mean, you got to remember I'm, I'm a stuntman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm used to doing stuff I'm, uh, you know, that's a little iffy. When Kurzinger played Jason in 2003's Freddy vs. Jason, he didn't realize it was such a big deal, but he soon became appreciative of the fan response. The face-off nature of this particular movie meant that Kurzinger even got the chance to act heroic for a moment, decapitating Robert England's Freddy Krueger in the closing moments. Bonnie Morgan – Rings a young Deve Chase played creepy girl Samara in 2002's The Ring and appeared in 2005's The Ring 2 via archive footage. But the majorly creepy stuff in the sequel came courtesy of contortionist Bonnie Morgan. The studio initially intended to use special effects for some key Samara scenes, but the stunt coordinator was a friend of Morgan's and suggested they use her instead. Speaking of one iconic scene, Morgan told Bloody Disgusting, The spider walk originated on my living room floor and we shot some footage of it, and the director could not have been more excited with the result. The work Morgan did on The Ring 2 led to her getting the part full-time when an unexpected sequel was greenlit years later. A decade had passed since the last movie, and Morgan had almost given up any hope of reprising the role, but she was back at her bendy best in 2017's Rings. 41, 42, 43, 44, contact lenses, and the wig. 45 appliances. But who's counting, right? Paul T. Taylor, Hellraiser, Judgment 
He had zero lines, but Paul T. Taylor was still thrilled to make his big screen debut in Robert Rodriguez's neo-noir classic Sin City in 2005. More bit parts followed, but Taylor was forced to put his career and life on hold after he was diagnosed with hepatitis C. The disease became hard to deal with and Taylor succumbed to depression. Thoughts of taking his own life began to cross his mind, but before he had a chance to do anything drastic, a new drug helped Taylor recover. He started auditioning again, and one day he received a script simply titled Judgment. As a Hellraiser fan, he saw through the ruse. From the first line, Taylor knew that this was a Hellraiser movie. He ended up being offered the role of Pinhead after the legendary Doug Bradley refused to reprise the role. Sherry Moon Zombie, Lords of Salem Sherry Moon Zombie and her husband Rob Zombie have collaborated on a handful of horror movies over the years, the first of which was 2003's House of a Thousand Corpses. This shameless throwback to the exploitation films of the 1970s was truly disturbing, and Sherry Moon stole the show as the crazed baby firefly. She reprised the role in 2005's The Devil's Rejects. This disturbing sequel places Baby right at the center of the carnage. Zombie was essentially playing a psychotic version of herself, so there wasn't much of a physical transformation needed. But that wasn't the case when the married couple worked together again on 2012's Lords of Salem. Zombie stars as a recovering drug addict who falls in league with the devil after becoming involved with a coven of witches. For the role, she agreed to have her hair in dreadlocks and sit through the application of several fake tattoos, not to mention some intricate face paint. There was only one actor that had a nervous breakdown <laughs> when, when new pages arrived. Right. Me? No, no. <laughs> no well, yes, you. Jonathan Breck, Jeepers Creepers. It's not uncommon for horror sequels to arrive suddenly out of the blue. With that in mind, Jeepers Creepers 3 was released in 2017, more than a decade after the first two. It took place between the events of the first two films, with Jonathan Breck returning to play the villainous Creeper. The original Jeepers Creepers divided critical opinion upon release, but quickly gained a cult following, with the Creeper catching the imagination of horror fans. According to the man underneath the makeup, his entire transformation takes between three and five hours. The only parts of himself that he can see when he looks in the mirror during the makeup application are his eyes, but he's far from uncomfortable in the Creeper getup. It's really great to watch the process. It's a layering process. By the time they're done, I am somebody else. Breck's physical dedication to the role goes beyond sitting in the makeup chair, as he revealed to IGN that he did a lot of his own stunt work on Jeepers Creepers 3 to save money. But when I look in the mirror, I've got it, you know, I'm bulked up, you know, three times the size that I normally am. You just feel like there's nothing you can't do, you know? I'm the creeper when I'm suited up.